to you, that little song just came to my mind. I'm a soldier, and I'm on the battlefield, and I'm fighting for the Lord. I'm a soldier, and I'm on the battlefield, and I'm fighting for the Lord. No matter what it looks like, I'm fighting for the Lord. No matter how I feel in my body, I'm fighting for the Lord. No matter what it sounds like, I'm fighting for the Lord. I promised him I. And you have to look back over your life. Have you promised God anything? When I look back over my life, I begin to think about what I told the Lord some 26, 27, almost 27 years ago. And I want to give honor to him tonight for being and truly keeping me and being the head of my life. And I give honor to his darling son, Jesus Christ, whoever liveth to make intercession for me and for the saints according to the will of God the Father. And I give honor to the Holy Ghost tonight because I couldn't make it without the Holy Ghost. And I wouldn't be standing today or standing here today without the Holy Ghost. And I want to give honor to the founder and presiding bishop, Dr. White. Amen. And you can give him a hand tonight. I want to give honor to our district superintendent, Elder Walter Jones. You can give him a hand as well. I want to give honor to you, Pastor Harris, in your presence. And I thank God for all of you tonight. I thank God that I'm on the battlefield because there are many fallen soldiers. But I want to thank God tonight that I'm still standing and I still have my war clothes on and I still am clothed in righteousness and I'm still walking with the shield of faith and I'm still walking with my feet shot with the preparation of the gospel and I'm still walking with the helmet of salvation and I'm still walking with the sword of the spirit and I'm still holding on to the breastplate of righteousness and I'm still, somebody say I'm still, praising thee. There's a song that says, I will be still praising thee, Selah. And I thank God tonight that I'm still praising thee, Selah. Amen. Because the God of heaven, somebody say the God of heaven. He is my strength and he is my shield and he is my buckler tonight. And I'm just preaching my testimony tonight. And when you begin to talk about how I almost didn't make it, and it just stirred up something in my spirit because, you know, I was sitting there just thinking, Lord, what will you have the people of God to know tonight but I'm still here somebody say I'm still here I'm still standing and as you begin to give those words it just begin to well up in my soul and begin to well up in my spirit because those that started out with me they didn't make it some in my family they didn't make it but I'm still here but this calls my scripture tonight, St. John 18 and 37. For this cause was I born. To this end came I into the world. Because I told the Lord, I said, well, I don't really know which way you want me to go. But something stirred up in my spirit. When you said I almost didn't make it. And I remember it was November. Back in 2016, and I began to have a problem and an issue in my body, and it just came out of nowhere, and it began to just overtake my body, and I didn't know what to do, and I began to cry out unto the Lord, and the more I cried, the worse it seemed to get, and sometimes you can cry unto the Lord. And God, the God of heaven, you know, there are angels that he dispatches and they do bottle up the tears of the righteous. And the Lord sends his angels to do just such. And the more I cried, I believe the more they took my tears. But it seemed like the situation just got worse and worse and worse. And I just began to give it all over to the Lord. And I got so weak in my body at one point in time, I almost collapsed in the shower. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I didn't even know how I was going to even get out the shower. And I just kept on thinking and praying, Lord, if you just hold me up. And if you just help me to get out of here. If you just 
touch me so I could just get one foot over and to get out of the shower. I was just that sick in my body. And it just got worse. And I just didn't know what to do. And it went on for weeks and weeks and weeks. And as it went on and on and on and on, all I could do was call on the name of Jesus. Sometimes all you can do is just call on the name of the Lord Jesus. And all you can do is say help sometimes. And I remember one time the one in the bishop said, sometimes you don't even know what to say. Sometimes all you can do is say, Lord, help. Lord, help. And I got to that point in my prayers, all I could say was, Lord, help. Because he's a God that has eyes and he can see. And he's a God that has ears and he can hear. And we say that sometimes as cliche, but I found out for myself that it's really true. And I found out for myself that he's a real God. And he's a God that has real eyes. And just like he can close and open his eyes, and you can close and open your eyes, he does it just for you. He opens his eyes just for me. Just so he can look upon our situation. The Bible says in Psalms, he's able to perfect that which concerneth us. And he knew I was really concerned because I was going down fast and I didn't know if I was going to be able to rise up again. But somebody say, but God. He's a God that is rich in mercy. And the Bible says that his mercy endures forever. And I don't know how Pastor Harris felt at the time, but... I didn't know what words to say to him and I didn't know what to do and he had just lost a co-worker to a similar situation and he had told the lady everything was going to be all right before she went into her surgery but everything wasn't all right because she didn't make it through and it had just been just around the same time but when I started going through my situation and I know that the man of God had to be concerned and there had to be something coming against him but Somebody said, but God, the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. And over in St. John 18 and 37, I believe that I heard something about being predestinated. I believe that God kept somebody. I believe that the Lord touched somebody and began to move in a way that would cause them to be preserved alive and be able to be presented faultless before the throne in glory, as it says over in the book of Jude. And over in St. John, I believe that it talks a little bit about Jesus' predestination. And I believe it talks a little bit about our predestination because we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And when we are in the house of God, there is a purpose. And when we're out in this land that the Lord God has placed us in, there is a purpose. And Jesus wanted them to know before he went away, because he was still in his mortal body, but before he left the mortal body, he wanted them to know that I have a reason for being. And as you walk along this way in this Christian journey in this mortal body, have you told somebody for your reason for being? And Jesus told them over in St. John, the 18th chapter. And many of us have read this a lot of times in our life in the Lord. But it should always mean something more and more every time you read it. Because every time we read it, we should understand a little bit more how much so we have been predestinated. And how much more, somebody say, how much more, how much more? the Lord has had grace upon us. And Jesus said over in 35, he answered and said, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. This was Pilate talking to Jesus. He said, What hast thou done? And sometimes it feels like when you're going through in this land, on this road, because the Bible said that this is a straight and a narrow way. And as you go along this straight and narrow journey, the enemy will ask you, what have you done? Because he doesn't understand that the hand of the Lord is upon you and that the spirit of the Lord is upon you, that you might preach the gospel. And he said, what has thou done? I want to tell you tonight that if he's asking you, what have you done? What hast thou done? 
you can answer the enemy in due season. And he says here, Jesus answered, my kingdom of not of, is not of this world. And it sounds like he wasn't getting to the point where he began to answer Pilate about what he's done. Because Pilate's saying, you know, I just need you to tell me what have you done. Because if you're standing before me, if you're standing in my presence, obviously you have done something wrong. But Jesus wasn't even concerned about the accusation. And he didn't even speak to what it is that he was asking him at that moment in time. But he wanted to let him know what the real reason was why he was standing in his presence. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. Because it's not about what I have done, but it's about the kingdom. It's not about what you have done tonight, but it's about the kingdom. He says, if my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight? In other words, if it was all about what's going on down here, if it was about everything or anything I have done down here, I wouldn't even be standing before your presence. He says that I should not be delivered. In other words, I wouldn't have even been delivered to you if y'all had anything to do with it. He said, but now is my kingdom not from hence. In other words, it's not about what's going on down here. It's not about what you see happening right now. He says, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? And it's as, as if they are having two different conversations. And when I first read this, I began to look at this and I'm saying, Pilate talking about one thing and Jesus talking about something else. The conversation looks like it's between two different sets of people. But Jesus was so spiritual minded that all he could think about was the kingdom of God. He wasn't even entertaining all this earthly stuff. The reason that he was even there because he knew that it was more than more to it than what they were talking about. And he said, thou sayest that I am a king. In other words, he said, I'm going to just give you what you said, but I'm not concerned about what you said. I'm just going to tell you what you said, but I'm going to reiterate that I'm coming to you in the spirit. He says, to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world. In other words, I came here tonight to be standing before you for this reason. He says that I should bear witness unto the truth. And the only reason that I'm standing before you tonight is because of the truth. The only reason that I have no servants here fighting for me is because it's not about me, but it's about the kingdom. The only reason that I don't have nobody here coming to come and take me away or not to even let me get to this point where I'm before you is because it's about the kingdom. He said that everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. I want to encourage you tonight that it's not about us. It's not even about our truth, but it's about the truth of the gospel because Jesus had opportunity to defend himself. Jesus had opportunity to speak his peace. Jesus had opportunity to say whatever he could say to make him look right because he wasn't wrong. But I want to encourage you tonight for this cause were we born. We were born. It doesn't matter what it looks like. The spirit keeps saying it doesn't matter what it seems like. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. Because sometimes you might not feel like praying. Sometimes you might not feel like fasting. Sometimes you might not feel like reading. Sometimes you may not feel like coming into the house of God. Sometimes you may not feel like doing X, Y, and Z. But it's not, not about how we feel. But it's about the kingdom. Jesus said, somebody said, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. In other words, he said, my home is not here. I want to encourage you tonight. For this cause were you born. For this cause were you born. Doesn't matter about anybody else's cause, but what was your cause? Why were you born for this cause? And when the enemy would come up against you and say, what have you done? You can tell him, for this cause was I born. 
I haven't done anything wrong, but I've done everything by the Spirit. I've followed the Spirit. That's what I have done. I have prayed and fasted. That's what I have done. I have sought the face of the King. That's what I have done. I have looked unto the hills from which cometh my help. That's what I have done. I have asked the Lord to be my strength. That's what I have done. I have sought the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness. And that's what I have done. I have received my predestination. That's what I have done. I have pressed toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. That's what I have done. What have you done tonight? I want to encourage you tonight. When the enemy say, what have you done? You begin to give him your resume in the spirit. Because everybody up in here got a spiritual resume. A lot of times we're concerned about dusting off the natural one. But if we would just dust off the spiritual one, God would begin to move. When was the last time I updated my spiritual resume? God is concerned about the kingdom. And everything and every work that I've done concerning it isn't on my resume. So when you go into your next interview spiritually and he asks you, what hast thou done? I want you to be encouraged to say, for this cause was I born. And you begin to pull out your spiritual resume. For this cause was I born. And you got to see this in the spirit. You begin to pull out your spiritual resume when they say, what hast thou done? Because that's the enemy's way of trying to interview you to see if you fit for the job that God has called you to be in. So when the next time he say, what has you done? You can hand him your spiritual resume and say, for this cause was I born. And for this end, I came into the world that I might bear witness of the truth. Turn to page two and you'll see all about the truth. I want to encourage you tonight. God is on the throne and Jesus is on his way back. I want you to be encouraged tonight for this cause were you born. To this end came you into, wor into the world. Don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season, and somebody say in due season, in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Set not your affections on things down here. Because Jesus didn't even answer the man concerning anything that he had done on the earth. He didn't talk about his works. He didn't talk about this. He didn't talk about the fact he was a carpenter. He didn't say anything about his natural vocation. But he talked about where he's from. And not only that, where he's going back to. I want to be want you to be encouraged tonight. Don't worry about where you came from. Only be concerned about where you're going to. I'll say that again. Don't worry about where you came from. Only be encouraged about where you're going to. And the God of heaven, somebody said the God of heaven, he will prosper you in the spirit. And he will give you all things pertaining unto life and godliness. The Bible says that he giveth us richly all things to enjoy. I want you to be encouraged tonight. God is on the throne. And not only is he on the throne, but he's working while he's on the throne. And he's working on our behalf tonight. You got to see it in the spirit. Because the enemy will cause you to be discouraged asking you, what have you done? But we have an answer in due season for him. I want you to be encouraged tonight. God is moving on your behalf. Pray my strength in the Lord tonight.